All right, everyone, Tree of Logic has been suspended on Twitter. I said yesterday, of course, it's getting more late in the day, so I rolled it over to today that I'd make a video on this subject. Um, looking at her video on it, link in the description, you can look at her video. You should subscribe her channel, too, because she has good commentary in general. I don't agree with her on everything, but, you know, I don't believe in censoring people. If someone's gotten... Now, kicked off of Twitter for apparently little to no provocation. I think that that's a problematic thing. You gotta understand, in the context, it's kind of funny. Uh, because we're used to seeing people that primarily, they're, they're conservative, and at the time that they've gotten banned, they've said something that you would associate maybe with the right. She's sitting there apparently insulted, you know, David Duke called him racist grandpa or something, and that's why she got actually kicked off. Now, in the context of that tweet, I don't think it's specifically because she was bullying David Duke or, or something. I don't, I don't think David Duke uh, took time out of his schedule to flag her down because, you know, he was angry after they had their, their debate there. I think that it's much more likely it was the former part uh, where she used some other unkind language, not directed at Duke himself, but at other people. And I will say this, uh, David Duke is a, is a fun, uh, funny individual, not funny as in ha-ha, but as in fucking weird. Um, it looks, looks a little bit like a beach boy that never updated his look, but got rich enough to wear a suit. Uh, but he's a public figure. Calling out a public figure, calling a public figure racist grandpa is, as far as I know, not going to get you banned off of a platform. A ta saying that their fans are, you know, insert language here, that could be a little bit different. That could be, see, I don't personally think that that should be bannable. Uh, I think Twitter is way, way too censored, but I think it was the latter part of it. I don't think it was the part specifically dealing with David Duke that got her kicked off. Nonetheless, now Twitter should reverse this decision. I mean, it's, it's fundamentally crazy. Number one, getting banned on Twitter isn't going to keep a person off of Twitter. You do realize that it is possible to bypass. It's like they do IP checking well, and change your IP. Look, I've been doing that sort of stuff for like chat rooms for a million years. It's relati relatively straightforward. It's not actually that difficult to get around it. I know they like they want like phone, or like a, a picture of your ID. Well, then just supply a fake ID. It's not against the look. If you go into a liquor store, try to get beer when you're 20 with a fake ID, that's illegal. If you're trying to tell Twitter, hey, you know that's not actually me. Here's the real me. What are they going to do about it? Literally, all they're looking at on that ID, <laughs> you can blank out most of the info. All they're looking at is like your name and stuff. So, just print out a fake ID and fucking then destroy it afterwards. So, you know, obviously you don't want to be found with it in any other situation, but as far as Twitter, who cares? Who cares? You know, uh, my, no, my name is not Styx Hexenhammer. My name is, is Eggman and the Walrus, see? Says right on my Vermont ID. What are you going to do about it? I'm not going to do a damn thing. Probably half the time they didn't even check it, really. Uh, so yeah, change your IP if they ask you for an ID or something. Make sure that it's a sat a fan run account. Oh, this is actually not Tree of Logic, says the account. This is like you know, I just am, I'm a fan of her. So yeah, I share out her videos and I happen to sound and look exactly like her. I'm actually her twin. You know, it'd be interesting if there were a pair of like uh, identical twins on Twitter. One of them got banned and then the other one ends up getting kicked off because they think it's the same person. They're like, no, 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 it's not actually me. It's like Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen, like Mary-Kate is trying to buy drugs again on Twitter. And uh, you know, Ashley's really, really pissed off when she realizes she got uh, suspended too because Twitter can't tell the difference between them. You know, they did diverge a little bit because one of them was bulimic, the other one was just snorting coke. So at some point, there's a little bit of a difference in the way they ended up appearing pre-obvious -plas plastic surgery. You know, not to get into uh, the realm of former 90s stars that are now uh, hopelessly irrelevant. But Tree of Logic shouldn't have been suspended for that tweet. I mean, this is the one that they showed her in the email saying, well, here's why we're kicking you off the platform. And the funny thing is, it's like a lot of times, it's, it, there's a huge amount of discretion involved. I think that's the other part. This is the problem I have with like what YouTube's doing. There's too much discretion. It's not cut and dry enough. Now with, uh, what's his name there? Logan, Paul Logan or Logan Paul, whatever the fuck it is. Uh, when they responded to that, because, you know, he's a big YouTuber, he's millions and millions of fans, makes a hell of a lot of money, so they decided to respond directly to the campaign to have him kicked off. And they said, well, no, YouTube is a place of law and order. Um, you know, it's either against the rules or it's not against the rules. We're not going to kick someone off the platform just because you happen not to like them. We're a place of, of laws and rules, and they will be followed to the letter. But you don't. Like, limited state alone is a huge, vague, gray area of discretion where something's not even against the rules, but you're suppressing it anyway. 
Twitter's 10,000 times worse than that. Twitter's way worse. They don't even give you an explanation half the time. It's just, oh yeah, we've locked you out of your account. We're, we're uh, temporarily suspending your account. You know, why? Nah, we're not gonna give you a reason necessarily. Can you appeal? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe your account just disappears. They say bye-bye and you don't get to appeal that either. I mean, it makes no sense. Good way to alienate anyone who's interested in political and social discourse from your platform. The thing is, here you've got Tree of Logic. She, she's not uh, exactly an, an alt-righter, okay? She's a fairly standard uh, conservative. Yeah, on the right, maybe far right, not guns or fiscally or something. She, but she, obviously she's sparring with the alt-right and you've decided that, you know, her presence is unacceptable. I think David Duke, oddly enough, if I remember correctly, still has a Twitter account. Not saying that he should be kicked off either. No, I don't care if someone's hateful and offensive. Look, this isn't even hateful and offensive. This is just her having a good time. She gets kicked off of the platform. Great way to alienate people. And other platforms have done this too. Like when someone goes after me and says that I'm a bad person for debating Richard Spencer or something, and it's sort of the same thing. It's like, well, you, you didn't debate him the right way. You didn't act incredulous enough. You didn't act angry enough. So, you know, somehow you're a problem. It's like, what the fuck are you talking about, dude? Other people have run afoul of this general tendency. Oh, you platformed somebody. Oh, you, you debated somebody, therefore they automatically win. You've contributed to hate. It's bullshit. And then we've got all these hit pieces coming from the propagandist lame stream. None of them are getting banned off Twitter, despite openly defaming people who sometimes have seven-figure totals of fans. Okay, they can defame all, they can break the law, literally libel them, uh, and they don't get kicked off of Twitter. Now, you'd think that would be something eventually they would take seriously. You know, the first time there's a major lawsuit, I'm hoping it starts with Right Wing Watch and Morsky, that might change. Oh, I would love it if that actually were to happen. But I don't think it was specifically uh, you know, said unkind thing about David Duke. No, I don't think that's why you got banned, Tree. I think you got banned because of the other part of that. I don't think you should have been banned. At the most, they should have said, you know, oh, here's a warning, you know, don't do it again. You know, they'd do that too. It's like, are they going to warn you? Temporary suspension? Limit some of your account features? Are they just going to kick you off the platform? It's the vagueness of it that bothers people more than how, how accepting or unaccepting it is towards political discourse. Having, a, having discretion means that when somebody gets kicked off, they're going to find a hundred examples where someone said something they will find equivalent who didn't get kicked off the platform and say, well, fuck you, I've been discriminated against by Twitter. And there is, there is a, a systemic level degree of political discrimination going on on Twitter. Absolutely. YouTube less so. YouTube, YouTube targets everyone because it's AI driven. You see, again, you see leftists that have been responding to like someone who's, you know, some skinhead does something crazy. Some left winger talks about it, gets kicked off because of the sensitive nature of the issue. It doesn't make sense. These are these big tech firms. Look, if you look what happens uh, to Facebook right now, Facebook is dying. Facebook, one of the largest websites in the world, five years ago, is totally hegemonic in the sense of social media. It is dying. It probably won't exist in a couple years. If it does, it'll be a messaging program. I predict that there won't even be Facebook profiles as you currently have them stand alone in a couple of years. There won't be any use for them. News sites, they're not going to bother aggregating on Facebook. I'm not going to pump any money into it. You're not going to get any ad revenue. Facebook will cease to function because it won't be able to pay the bills and keep the lights and servers on, so to speak. Don't think you're too big to fail. Twitter, YouTube, Amazon, any of these groups. Absolutely you can. You've got to make smart decisions. Part of that is making sure that the creators, the people that are actually participating with your site, don't feel alienated. Right now, generally speaking, like Facebook totally alienated content creators. We've all, most of us have probably deleted our accounts or we don't do anything there. We're just cluttering up their platform. Fucking who cares? Twitter, it's becoming less fun. Gab is growing for a reason. Minds is, is supplanting Facebook. It's going to become, I think, the next big social media network. Absolutely. At the very least, it's going to become a major social media network. It's going to be considerably larger than it is now. And Tree, I believe, is on Minds as well. You've got all of these new sites rising up. BitChute is growing rapidly. Steemit is growing rapidly. They're growing for a reason. They're not growing. If your sites, if YouTube was hegemonic in supplying entertainment and commentary and no one had any problem with the site, nobody would have a backup presence. There wouldn't be a reason to. They feel perfectly comfortable just being YouTubers, as I did up until a year ago. I didn't want to be anything but a YouTuber. I'm like, yeah, this is sort of my home. I've been here for 10 friggin' years. What else need I say? With Twitter, 
There are a lot of people, they're like, wow, Twitter's so great. And now they're like, yeah, I don't know if I want to rely on just being on Twitter. I could get banned at any given time. Now I don't even have to say anything particularly out there. Tree is saying something, it's, it's basically a joke. It's not really that out there. I see 10,000 more things that are uh, worse than that on Twitter every day. And I'm never going to report them because, you know, I don't believe in that. So what people should do to respond to this is just never report anything. Absolutely, unless it's criminal in nature, you know, exploitation or rape or something. If you see something like that, okay, you see something, say something. If it's not illegal, you shouldn't report it at all on any platform. No, we should just refuse to use those features, force their staff to do more work. They'll never be able to keep up with it all. Eventually, they will throw their hands up and give up. They'll have to limit what they police because they'll no longer be able to police it all. It'd be a wonderful time. It'd be like the golden age of the internet maybe five years ago. That's really, that's really the sweet spot, 2013 to 2015. It's like the sweet spot of all internet culture. You know, before the lamestream convinced a bunch of politicians that they donate money to that there was a problem online, they need, we need less free speech, it's getting scary. People are dissenting, people are getting their news from something other than Fox or CNN. Oh Lord, what do we do as a culture? Oh goodness, we won't be able to brainwash people anymore. And they'll, they'll literally, hey, to use the term, they'll break the conditioning. Uh, it's been great, but uh, yeah, Tree of Logic shouldn't have been banned for that. It's ridiculous. Uh, really, most of the people that have been like Baked Alaska, why is he not on Twitter? You know, why was his his parody account? It certainly wasn't him. Why was that banned? It didn't even say anything that was out there. People on the left and on the right. I can't wait to see, I can't wait to see the day when the Young Turks get accidentally banned by an AI at some point, and then they start complaining about too much censorship. And it's gonna happen. Trust me, it's gonna, Kimmel's gonna get knocked offline by an algorithm at some point, and then do a half hour special about how bad big tech is, and then they'll back off. They'll care then because they get millions of dollars from these people. You know, they obviously don't care about independent creators. They do care about the ones that trade money with NGOs. Yeah, when the ADL's uh, YouTube page accidentally gets knocked offline because some nerd in an office somewhere pressed the wrong button, then all hell breaks loose, not until then. That's about all. Peace out.